that we're looking for. I yeah. did not hear. Okay. I mean, I think we can go ahead and get started. At least the first two items are fairly quick and to the point, right? Minutes and roll call. I don't think <laughs> anyone is going to miss miss those. So I guess uh, mm -hmm. welcome to the Albany Arts Committee, I guess, special meeting on July 27th. Um, call to order roll call. Uh, Member Holland, are you present? Present. Member Post Goodman? I note that as a present, Member Jang. Present. Okay, and I am a present as well, so I believe we have a quorum, right, at four? Mm -hmm. Four members, okay. Uh, moving on to the minutes from our last meeting, June 29th. Has everyone had a chance to look? Um, are there any comments, suggestions, or a motion to approve the minutes? I move to approve. Okay. Peter, is that a second? Yeah, that's a second. Okay. All in favor of approving the minutes? Do we do we have to do can we do a voice vote or do we have to uh call this one out? Voice roll call vote, please. Okay. Uh Member Holland, do you approve of the minutes? I approve. Member Goodman? Yes. Member Jang? Yes. Okay. And I do as well, so it passes. Um, also, Arts Committee uh, member Black, uh, she's uh -huh. online. Hi, Cheryl. Hi, Cheryl. Where are you? Okay. Talk now. Okay. Cheryl, member Black, do you approve of the minutes from our <laughs> June 29th I, meeting? I do. There I am. Okay. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> okay. So that passes. Uh, item three, public comment. Is there any public comment? Seeing none, we can move on to announcements from staff or committee members. Are there any announcements? Um, staff, does, um, the only announcement I would make is just to remember that um, there's no meetings in August, so the next scheduled meeting will be the uh, second Monday in September. Okay. Okay, Member Goodman, you had an announcement. Uh, yeah, I I I thought that actually fall into haiku was going to be on the agenda this uh, this meeting. I see it as not. So um, I would just use this opportunity to say that I contacted the um, uh, Albany Community Foundation and asked if money was going to be available uh, to support the program. And Doug Donaldson told me that they're meeting. Actually, I think they're meeting tonight, uh, and they're going to be taking that up. Um, assuming the answer is in the affirmative, then uh, maybe I can talk with the chair and with the staff liaison about what possible plans are so that we can have something to officially decide on September at our next meeting. Okay. Thank you. Any questions or reactions from staff or other committee members to Peter's announcement? I hope it goes well, Peter, and I hope they, they approve the funding. Me too. Any other announcements? Okay. Uh, presentations? No, nothing? Uh, okay. Nothing. <laughs> no. So item 6-1 then. Uh, Black Lives Matter art project. We can all see the agenda item, the description. We're familiar with what um, we were tasked with doing. My understanding is that the uh, committee has not seen our draft questions or any feedback. Is that correct? Correct. See an affirmative. So, Eva, what I would do is uh, either or I or you, whoever has it, can share our screen with our draft questions. And I thought also share the feedback from the consultants that uh, the city had hired. Is if, if you, do you have it accessible on your screen you can share? I just copied and pasted some questions in Word and I copied the feedback in Word. So I'm not uh, a technical maestro here, but I can try to do this real quick. Okay. Otherwise I can. So, here we go. Can you guys see this? 
That looks like the feedback. Maybe no, no. That's the. Mm -hmm. that, those are the is, questions. If you can zoom in. So, so I, I'm not so good. I'm not so good to share two screens at once. But these are the initial questions that Member Holland and I drafted. Let me try to see if I can increase the font here, um, and then we can talk about some feedback and then get uh, reactions. Let's see. that legible? Yeah, and if that's just to chime in, uh, Liam here, uh, up in your, your top scroll by there, it says view options. As a viewer, you can you can adjust your zoom ratio as well for your own computer settings. Thank you. It is legible. So if everyone take a minute to read and then uh, perhaps Member Hall and I can provide some of our thinking behind the questions. Um, we can discuss the consultants feedback and then go from there if that makes sense. Has everyone had a chance to read? Assuming so, I will just quickly say, Jenny, you know, please add in, hop on what, what you would like to add. One of my priorities was trying to keep the survey um, to be, to include as much information as possible, but be very brief and hopeful to get a higher response rate and to leave uh, the questions open to elicit community response and input and, and not kind of give, uh, pre-prescribed options or multiple choice or, or things of that nature. So my intention, my motivation was, was in a lot of senses, brevity and kind of open-ended, hoping to hear what people were thinking, feeling, et cetera, in their own words. Jenny, do you have anything you would like to add or, or further context? Sometimes this doesn't work. Oh, good. Thank you. Yeah, we started off with about 10 questions and we sort of winded them down from, you know, my philosophic point of view to questions that we thought would get the widest, we cast the widest net. Um, I think that when we go from here to the questions that one of the strategic people, consultants, um, suggested we add, I think they're very good questions to add. There, we really do want to see. I think we have to explain ourselves a little bit too, because I think people don't understand what the arts committee does and where the money for the arts committee comes from and that the city council has asked us to do specifically an art project about Black Lives Matter. That isn't the solution to the social issue, but that it is a representation of where the city wants to be right now. Okay. What I would do then before we dive into our feedback and additional comments is, is show the consultants feedback. So we're aware of that all on the same page um, and can go from there. So give me a moment as I transition here. Let's see if I can pull it off. Uh, okay, hold on. Here. Does everyone see this? My thoughts include the following. Yes. Okay, let me increase the font and slowly, you know, I'll start to slowly scroll down. Sorry for the uh, delay with everything. So, sorry, this is very crude. This is just copy and pasted into here, but I'll, I'll slowly scroll down. My 
point something out about Miss um, Anderson's questions? Of course. So I, I think if you look at uh, Jenny, could could you could you wait until we finish reading it before you comment? Of course. I wonder, I wonder, Brenda, would you be willing to read these out loud just so we all hear them in the same tone? Sure. There's uh, so there's can. Feedback from two consultants. I'll, I'll go, go through the first one from Nicole Anderson and then from her, her colleague. So here she goes. My thoughts include the following based on my limited context and background. One, when admis administering the survey, it is important to include a good context and purpose for the BLM art project. Two, it is important to ensure that outreach for survey results goes to a diverse group of people in the city making sure the African-American community weighs in as well as any groups who may have the influence to push back. Three, surveys should be given in multiple modalities, not just digital. Four, the group should conduct research on other cities who have done similar projects. Also, the group should reach out to the BLM organization to get input. Also, the group should get input from local advocacy groups to ensure support through an alliance and collective efforts. Consider five, Consider a survey question to address potential locations in the city. Six, consider a survey question to include any barriers that the group should anticipate when rolling out the project. Seven, consider a survey question around the budget to anticipate any pushback around financial concerns the community may have. Eight, the group should ensure that the art project includes a diverse African-American perspectives, it's a typo, and not just one dimension, i.e. share historical perspective beyond slavery in US history. So that was the first consultant's feedback. Nicole Anderson's colleague also offered feedback, which I'll read. Good morning. I wanted to think about it and actually went back to the listening session and Monday's meeting with this in mind. My thoughts are a bit different in that while I commend the Arts Committee wanting to do a project, it's a great idea and the right time can be an amazingly unifying concept. My concern is that this well-intentioned effort will fall flat if you move on this before doing the, that actual work in the community to reflect the sentiment and purpose behind the Black Lives Matter movement. In short, good idea, really bad timing. I truly don't think it will land well given the way the last few meetings and listening session went. They want, they want change, not monuments, statues, or artwork. That being said, I think there is value in the Arts Committee being part of the change work and could, one, document the process through art inspired by the process, two, using the process to inspire a celebratory piece that represents the hard work the city has done to create meaningful change, three, transparently letting the community know that this is happening and to get involved to reach out to the art committee, four, having the students and children in the community be a large part of what you do, and definitely five, whatever project you do must be committed to BLM yet unifying to the city. We haven't done the work to get everyone on board so I don't think it will be as unifying because not everyone is on the same page about the Black Lives Matter sentiment or movement. Let this project represent the healing and the promising future that will only be inspired by actual healing and envisioning of an anti-racist future that acknowledges the past. I know that may not be what they want to hear, but however you move forward, be ready for the pushback if this comes out before they see real commitment to change. In truth and power, Shelley. And uh, who is Shelly? She's a colleague of Nicole Anderson. Eva, Isabel, correct me where I'm wrong, but I believe she's part of the consulting group that has been hired by the city. Correct, correct. Part of Eva's same group, so they're, they're, it's the same group with two opinions, basically? Um, so the question, this is the consultant that was hired by the city and has been working closely with the SEJC, Social Economic Justice Commission. Um, on on what council has directed them to do and it's a um, uh, kind of a comprehensive diversity impact plan and um and so what we were able to do is kind of tie in because it it's ties in so well as the art project that the uh, council has directed the arts committee to take over and we get, sent them uh, we sent nicole anderson the survey questions the six survey questions and then she passed it along to her colleague, Dr. Shelley Holt, who also gave her perspective. So um, same questions and two people's feedback. Are there 
other questions, reactions, um, either to the, the draft questions Jenny and I put together and or the feedback from the consultants? I'd like to speak if I can, is that okay? Sure. Great. So I think that the second consultant to me represents the voice of people who need more context. For example, we didn't want to do this project. We were asked by the city to do this project. I think, I think that one of our jobs and one of our things going to the city will be to say, we have to create a context in which the community knows it's the will of the city council that we do something to represent both the history, the racist history of Albany in some, some way and the way that the city is changing. The other, does that make sense that I think people need to know the context in which this is happening? And the context is it's driven by the city council, that it was a charge that the city council gave the arts committee. Um, the second thing is that people, we found this with the loop, people don't understand where the money for the arts committee projects comes from. People think that we're taking money away from civic infrastructure or something. This is, remember when we did the loop and a lot of the pushback we got was, why are we spending money on art? And they don't realize that we have this money because of the ordinance and that we wanna, this is, this is the only thing we can use the money for. We're not taking money away from anything else. It's our fund. So I think we need to do, whatever we do, we have to make it really clear both, I think, in our personal representations to people that we give the survey questions to and in the digital representation and in every way, in creating a context that says, this is something the city really wants to do. We have some money already earmarked for public art. This, we wanna use some of that money for a project that reflects the changing attitudes towards racism in Albany. And in my mind, I can, I can really see it come together if we, if we get some data from the city about how the police force used to function. When, when I first moved to Albany, there was a Citizens for the American Way office on Solano, which was a, the name of the John Birch Society. And, and I was appalled. I was like, I'm not moving to this town, you know? But we need to, we need to address the fact that black lives have not always mattered in the city of Albany and that this is a shift and we want to represent the shift and we want the community to come together. So I already jumped ahead to the project I want to see happen, but it doesn't matter what I really want to see happen. But you know what I mean? I think we just have to create a really good context for this so people really understand where we're coming from and where the money's coming from. Well, on, on that where is the money coming from? I thought that the city was basically saying that they were going to put up the money and that this was not necessarily coming from the, uh, the public arts fund. I, I don't know if it's coming from the general fund, uh, but the arts committee was brought in uh, mostly to manage the project because we have experience in this area. Uh, so from our normal charge and our work plan, which had a budget and everything, this, this was like an add-on and separate. Am I, am I wrong about that? Uh, no, you're not wrong. And originally, the council had earmarked um, $6,500 uh, from the council discretionary fund, which is general fund for this project. Um, but any, if you find that that is not enough or that there's a need for more, then uh, your recommendation uh, would have to... Uh, include where that the you know the difference would come from and probably it would be from uh, uh, the public art fund also I mean uh, the other thing I want to mention based on the comments that we've received from the public and that's up to you to decide but if there is a lot of um, pushback for using general fund money for uh, this art project, it could be one of the recommendations by the Arts Committee to use the public art fund, which is earmarked for public art um, and is not taking money away from, um, you know, something else. So that's another suggestion uh, that you could keep in mind as you get results from uh, the survey. Um, that's, an, that's something you can keep in mind. All right. Okay. Thanks. And if can I ask Isabel, is there any in 
theory, any limitation on the, the sources of funding? For example, this potential project would intersect with anything social justice, racial reconciliation, if there's police reform and this were tied to it. Like, I don't know if the city will be, you know, obtaining grants in the future, but this is a sensitive topic that crosses a lot of uh, constituencies and potential budget categories. And so while I recognize public art would potentially be relevant, is there any limitation that it, you know, it could not draw from the general fund, from, you know, social programming fund, whatever. I'm not familiar with the city budget, obviously, but are there any limitations there? Uh, I mean, you can certainly make uh, some suggestions as to where you think the money should come from um, and, and see and go back to council with those suggestions. Um, just so you know, though, in September, the council will be reviewing the city budget uh, with an eye to um, the effects of uh, and the, the loss of income due to COVID. So there's going to be a lot of talk about budget. Uh, at, at, across the city and all departments. So, and is there any way um, does this fall into, or could it fall into the expenditures related to the consultants or that initiative? I don't have the exact nomenclature, but the what is it, the racial impact plan or, or the first city impact plan, etc. I mean, <laughs> if well, I'm thinking, holy, does this fall into that umbrella? Well, right now there's a, you know, we have a contract with the consultant for uh, $30,000 and that pays for the consultant's work. Um, you know, any other source of, of funding for the, uh, for, for EML project would have to, you know, be, it would have to be assigned to that project, uh, but it can be, it can tie into the contract that we have currently with the, the, the consultant. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Peter? Uh, yeah. Uh, could, could you and Jenny explain the, uh, uh, the, the process you, you see with, you, you prepare a questionnaire, you, you send it out, you gather results, and what then? How do, how do you see this as working? And do you have a, a timeline in mind? So there is a, a draft timeline that I can share in a second, Eva, I think, with uh, everyone on the screen. I, I think to kind of answer and not answer your question is I would imagine that, especially based on the consultant's feedback, which I think is sensible, the, a lot of the work um, to be done is to be done before the, the questionnaire actually goes out to get feedback and get people on board with answering and being aware of it. Um, once that's finalized, get it out and try to get as much input and feedback as possible and then turn it around as part of integrate that with, I think, the separate research that we're doing, looking into what do things cost, what have other cities done, what do other you know arts professionals think of this project. Um, my understanding tentatively, if I can, let me see if I can screen share again. I'm not sure if this is going to work. Um, you know, as of... Uh, Wait, that's not it. There we go. Does everyone see this? Yep. So it would be, I think, Peter, this is the, the rough outline that um, has been discussed. My, my concern that I've raised this and it, it's elicited by your comment is that I don't think this project should be seen kind of as a standalone ad hoc project, I think it makes sense to see it holistically as part of the city's wider initiative to address this general topic. And because of that, I think that our part of providing expertise on the arts related component, it needs to be slotted into the wider time frame and project. So if if diversity is this like a initiative with through the social and economic justice committee, it's going to take three months, six months, whatever it is, it makes sense to integrate the arts component of that kind of into that wider umbrella and the, the timeline should sink somehow, if that makes sense. If, if groundwork really does need to be done before an art project is discussed, we need to be aware of that and adjust the timeline accordingly. So I, I don't know if I've completely answered your question, but those are my thoughts in, in regard to how an order of operations would needs to work. 
We specifically need to work with community members to, I think, refine the questionnaire and get people to answer it. Um, we need to collate it with our research and then provide a recommendation to city to city council. But I think that work needs to be done within a sensible time frame to this wider initiative. So um, is SEJC the one that's kind of responsible for the what you call the wider initiative? The SCJC is working with the uh, consultant on a diversity impact plan, um, but it's a you know it's a we have our contract with the consultant for a year, so it's a it's a longer term uh, process. Um, I think their first uh, check in with council will be sometime in September uh, to um, you know to 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 go over a preliminary draft. Um, but yes, the, the, the plan is to have the consultant uh, available to us for the, for the full year. So going back to what Brandon, Brandon was saying, were you, were you saying that, you, that uh, you're gonna be consulting with SEJC or working with them somehow to, to coordinate this with their, with their efforts and their findings? We haven't formally gotten to that point, but I think it's sensible to, at the very least, touch base with them and to me, it seems sensible. This is me speaking personally. I haven't spoken with Jenny about this, anyone else. This seems kind of, you know, part and parcel of the same wider initiative or interest um, or opportunity. And so it makes sense for there to be some type of synchronization there. Um, otherwise, I think it's, you know, one hand is doing one thing and another is doing the other and they would be more productive synced in some, in some oh, way. Uh, That's my opinion. Considering the, the complexity that that brings to the, the whole process, and I, I don't know how often they're meeting, but you've got a kind of a, a tentative a goal of presenting um, a, a plan to the council sometime in August or October. That, that doesn't quite seem realistic. With that that timeline was also Peter based. With, it was before our awareness of the consultants' feedback and this oh, okay. kind of wider concept of doing a holistic approach. So the holistic approach, in a sense, is novel, at least to, to Jenny and I. And you know, we need to go back and, and think about that and see if if the city or SEJC or someone else is in the position to provide that holistic timeline or framework and say, Arts Committee, we want your expertise. We need it in this period, or we need you to deliver it in this period. Um, we can prepare whatever, but we these three months is when you have to do the survey, the feedback, et cetera. I think, I think everyone would benefit from that, but that's an open question um, that, that is beyond the arts committee in a sense, I think. So I don't know, Eva, Isabel, Liam, I don't know if this is a question for staff, if city council has to weigh in, if if what I'm kind of advocating for explaining makes sense or it's completely off chart, um, but it, I think it's beyond the arts committee. We're happy to help and I think we can do good work, but we need a wider framework, I think. That's that's my impression and that's my. And, and I can speak to that just a little bit and, and agree with you kind of in uh, an email you sent a little bit earlier of just, you know, the arts committee has been asked to, you know, they're, an arts committee is the advisory body, right? So they're doing the research, they're getting the community feedback, uh, they're coming up maybe with some options or, or one option uh, that includes a timeline and a budget um, as a possibility. But then you're right, you do need to go to council and they have the ultimate say of, you know, we want the timeline shorter or longer, that's way too much. We feel like just from what we're hearing, it should look more like this. So, um, so I think it's more, I, I agree with you in the sense that um, they're going to be the ones to make the ultimate decision based on your research and, and everything we've talked about, I think will be very comprehensive um, as far as getting community input from a diverse range of community groups and um, well thought out too. And that's kind of, I think where we started, <coughs> excuse me, is, um, we felt the, the urgency to kind of speed this along and knowing our public art process um, and being more realistic with how to create a public art piece that it, that's hard to do and then 
as we're finding out, given the sensitivity of uh, the Black Lives Matter art project and what's going on kind of in the greater city, I think that's where we kind of need to slow down, really reassess. Um, but I think you guys are on the right track. The survey questions, kind of developing those uh, and getting more input and then putting those out to the community. Can we know the timeline of the SEJC work? Because I at least would like to see that and, and make working with, uh, you know, committee member Holland and if we have another additional uh, committee member, that'd be great. But, you know, I would incorporate that into our recommendation in theory, like, you know, given the wider framework of things going on in the city, we would recommend it happens, you know, X, Y, and Z date or period. And I'd also be concerned. The reason I asked for that information too is if what the consultants essentially are saying, I think is that if you go to the community with these questions now, they might not be ready for it. If then that committee is going to go to the community with questions or outreach, you risk either A, fatigue or B, alienation or, you know, people talking past each other. So there needs, we don't want to go to people over and over again for input. I think it makes sense to integrate these processes mm -hmm. somehow. So is there a way we can have, you know, their timeline and kind of bullet point plan for the year yeah. and integrate that directly? Yeah, their timeline is a moving target also. They have a lot of work ahead of them, but they are meeting two times in August, um, a sp a special meetings to move the work along. So they're meeting on Tuesday, August 4th, and they have another meeting uh, scheduled, uh, I think it's a Thursday, August 20th. So I think between those two meetings, they, um, they will do a lot of, of work in August and we'll have a, well, will have a better uh, feel for where they're at um, in the process uh, in September when they go to council uh, to present uh, their preliminary draft or you know the, an update as to where they're at. Um, I, I mean, one suggestion is to do the same for the arts committee is without going moving forward the survey necessarily right now because of what you mentioned, Brendan, uh, is to go back to the arts committee and, uh, to the council and and with your rec the recommendation as you just described it uh, that you want to the, the 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 work of the arts committee to parallel the work of the SEJC and be incorporated in the overall um, scope of work of, on the uh, racial impact plan and uh, I mean for all the the, the the reasons you mentioned, those are, that that would be a you know a, a great way to move forward. Also, Member Holland, is anybody from our committee listening in or attending the SEJC meetings? I, I'm not, but I but I could I could listen in on the meeting of August fourth if it's a public meeting. I can mm -hmm. totally do that. I can't do a Thursday night. The other thing that I was going to ask um, Zebo and Cheryl and Peter is if you would think think about survey questions and think about the feedback we're getting, and if you have any feedback for us, for me and Brandon, give it to us, please. That'd be great. Also, I'm starting to develop a list of. Um, community arts organizations that have done good work in Richmond, Berkeley, and Oakland. So if you know of individuals or organizations, just so we have like a complete packet of, and if you have, especially if you have contacts in the city government or city arts in any of those places where you could say, this is how we have done it. I thought that was a really provocative question was how have other cities done it? I mean, they've done it in a bunch of different ways, but. I just would like, uh, if you anything comes to you, please throw it our way. Is there other feedback from the committee, from the Arts Committee on, you know, for now, the questions, the timeline, the context, et cetera, et cetera? I, uh, I, I was Peter. interested in what, uh, uh, Jenny, I think it was what you were saying about Albany's troubled past. I, mean, I, I know the city continues to have a reputation as being pretty much of a hard ass when it comes to uh, treating people on the streets or, or cops thinking that people don't belong here and uh, giving them a rough time. 
uh, that, that was certainly the case when I moved here in 1985. Uh, I'm aware of the John Birch Society having had an office too. I wonder if that's something that could uh, really be the focus of uh, uh, of what this, um, you know, of what our local initiative is about. And I, I bring that up just in context of you were asking for questions and maybe some, one of the questions could be very particular to Albany. How have you felt uh, in Albany? You know, have, you, have you felt welcome? I mean, if, if you're a person of color and being asked to answer this question, how do you, how do you feel? And how would you like to see that feeling uh, reflected or, or dealt with in, in some way? I mean, it may, in other words, to make it very specific to our city so it's not just another generic response by municipality. I think that's a good idea, Peter. Jenny? Speak to that for a second. I think that I saw Zebo shaking his head and I know that the kids at Albany High have a completely different experience of the police and the authorities in Albany than I do, but I think we have a real opportunity here with the, with the Arts Committee and the SEJC because we can, I think we can talk openly about the past. We could do some research about the past and past attitudes and use this as a, a moment to pivot, like to really represent a change this is that this is not the way the future will be. So it would be great to have high school students involved, be great to have the police involved. It'd be great to go through police records and see how, what the policing will, because BLM is really, Police, it's a police oriented subject as far, as far as I'm concerned. And so it's like to get them on board and say, yeah, this happened in the past. That's not how the police force wants to work anymore. That's not how that we did it that way. And we don't, it wasn't us or, or it was us and we're sorry, you know, but I think you're right. Really, really specific to Albany is what we could really do something cool. I have a related question, if I can piggyback real quick for staff. One thing Jen and I have talked about coming out of some of these listening sessions and also people are talking about police data, et cetera, et cetera, in these, these conversations is how powerful, to your point, Peter, in a sense, some of these specific stories or also data points could be to an eventual art project. And at that point, I'm wondering, are there any limitations on public records that the city has or is aware of, like, if an artist wanted to base their project on traffic stop data, just as an example, or the stories that maybe are collected in police reports or whatever it might be, it, it doesn't have to be the police, it could be city council meetings addressing racism, et cetera. Are there any limitations to the availability of that type of information for a potential artist or group of artists or community network wanting to kind of use that as a primary material for a potential project? Uh, the police department does uh, publish a bulletin. I think it's a weekly bulletin on the city website. And so there's information there. Beyond that, I'd have to check with our uh, police chief and our city attorney as far as what other information would be available if an artist wanted to uh, you know, research uh, as part of a public art project. And, and we to add on to that, we had talked about... Um, uh, I guess you would call it like opting in on the survey, but one thing staff had talked about um, is just a disclaimer that said all submissions are, are public record essentially, and so that those could be available. But <coughs> by, by filling this out and submitting it, you're agreeing to. Um, so we can work on, and on the, the verbiage too, but that would be available if we decide to go that out. Okay. Peter? Uh, I, I don't remember the questions. Did the questions, the questions didn't specify a mural, right? It, it kind of left open as uh, giving people the opportunity to suggest some other medium if they, if they thought that was more appropriate. Yeah, in, in general, we haven't completely gone down that road before, but I think both Jenny and I were in agreement that we didn't want to um, prejudice any type of medium or even location in the city in terms of the art. We wanted to leave it as open as possible uh, to what people might want to see or, or react to.
Is there other feedback or questions, Jenny? I have one. One is that something that Brandon brought up, which I think is a really cool idea, which is if we could document the work of the SEGC and the Arts Committee as we go and have that be part of the project so that there might be a film or a series of stills of us trying to figure out what is the Albany's past and who do we have to talk to and what are community members saying. And I think that, um, I just think that it's a, it would be a great opportunity to make a little movie about Albany. Reactions? I, I like it as an idea, but any reactions or? I mean, you have a lot of footage, um, you know, just all the public meetings are recorded, available on YouTube and uh, there's been a few listening, there's been, you know, the town hall, the listening session, and there's probably going to be more listening sessions or other public meetings that uh, will occur. So it, that could be a form of public art if you wanted to go that way. Sure. That's a public record. Mm -hmm. There's also um, a, a mural that went up recently, and it, it looks like the work of uh, Christian Munez, and I think it's along the Ohlone Greenway, but it's in um, response to Black Lives Matter. Does anyone know anything about that? No, I can. Um, I have a, a picture of it. I can also send it around. Eva, I think it's the. I think they re they redid the one directly across from the community center, right? Yeah, it's right across the street from the community center um, on the Ohlone Greenway. So it's yeah. somebody's shed or. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it's worth looking at, and it does look like Christian work so i'm assuming it's his yeah okay and while i was unmuted i might as well mention it again i would just say uh when uh long 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 ago when we uh there was a talk of doing a mural on the ground one of the other arts committee members brought this up and it was included in the conversation was just that um sometimes you can address these making sure we're doing this project for the right reason by documenting it, right? So then like you control the process. Uh, control is not the right word, but you show the process from start to finish is this is why we're doing it. So if the consultant or anybody else was, was concerned it wasn't the right time to do it, maybe that element of it could could provide context, I guess, to the, to the process. Okay, thank you. Other feedback or questions or concerns I think other way my takeaway otherwise my takeaway is there's some specific questions or suggestions around the questions to potentially make them more specific where possible um, it seems there's at least if not enthusiastic acceptance uh, general acquiescence to the idea of integrating this to the extent possible in the wider SAJC approach um, I mean, bottom line, it's, it sounds like Jenny and I need to continue to do our work, refine our questions, do more research, and really, you know, try to see the broader timeline and where Arts Committee fits into that. Cheryl, Peter, Member Jang, Jenny, does that sound broadly okay? Yeah, it certainly does. Absolutely. I'm concerned that we get to... Um, I like the idea of having it open and the context of how we get to where we get to, but um, that can be very distracting in terms of the actual piece and the actual approach to things. So I think we need to be careful about that and keep that possibly, I mean, it could be that that's the most interesting thing we do and we just go with that, but I, I would like to see something more um, substantial, permanent somewhere, you know, that kind of thing. So this, without wanting to keep everyone very long, just because we're here, you know, we haven't talked about what would an eventual RFP look like if we went down that road. Um, Cheryl, it's sounding like you would prefer, you know, less kind of broad brush strokes with some more specificity and to have an actual physical, some type of something somewhere. Sometimes Is that to show that it's not just spinning kind of wheels and that kind of thing. Um, 6,500 is what they were saying we could have and then if we needed more money. So I don't know. Okay. 
other feedback before I let you go uh, on, you know, an eventual hypothetical RFP, more or less detail, uh, you know, more or less open. I think one thing Jenny and I talked about, we'd agree with is that any type of selection panel would have to be very inclusive and have, you know, community members that are well positioned to discuss the experience of being black in Albany and combine that with some public art expertise. Um, other than that, I don't think we've really, you know, gone that far, but if you already have feedback advice, it'd be great to have it now. I, I think Cheryl makes a, makes a good point about specificity and, and direction, uh, not to be too open-ended. Um, how you get to that point though, I mean, how, how you get to what specifics you want to include is part of the whole preliminary process that I guess you're going into, but I mean, things that I would imagine would be included would be uh, location, uh, type of art, uh, what your expectations for it are, whether it's going to be uh, short term or whether it's meant to be permanent. And with $6,500, obviously, that means your, um, you know, your, your, uh, your directions need to be uh, realistic, you know, what, cause what could you get for that? these days. But I, I think overall Cheryl's idea is that you want something uh, specific in the RFP is much better than just saying something that in your mind as an artist addresses the problem that we've identified. I, I don't think that would be very helpful. And also uh, I think I, I think maybe what Cheryl was suggesting was that once you have an artist in, in mind then it's any, like any other artistic creation it's not necessarily something that's created it's not a horse created horse created by committee. You know, it's a it's an artistic work, and the artist is allowed to um, express his or her vision without a lot of uh, control or uh, micromanaging from the committee or from anyone else. Okay, thank you, Jenny. Is there anything you would like to add before we? I just want to thank everybody because that's actually really helpful. This discussion has been really helpful. So thank you very much. And did the subcommittee want to talk a little bit about um, your own personal timeline? We know Jenny's last day on the committee is September 30th, knowing that this project is going to expand past then. Um, what does that look like? I, I like doing research. So I would like to continue doing research. I like working with Brandon. We could we could really work on those questions, but it's true that we want to flow into the SEGC's timeline and have it be integrated. I would like to, in September, be able to present some options of artists to work with. I know this, that's totally skipping ahead, but the, but the truth is that there are some really great organizations doing public art on the street that are people of color and they're beautiful works of art that I think any any city would go, wow, that's really great. But I just think we have to create the context for that to happen and, and, and generate the enthusiasm and the meaning of it. I think it's what, gonna cost more than $6,500. <laughs> I think it would too. That's for sure. <laughs> I think what Eva, at least in my case is referencing, I can you know work on this, I think relatively a lot, all things considered in August, but in September, I would have to probably set step back or reduce my involvement. And what I'm thinking I could do is, is this month try to do as much as I can and, and working with Jenny create in a sense a, a draft template or, you know, obviously draft questions, but even a draft recommendation or a template like overview that can then, you know, hopefully quickly and easily be adjusted by myself or other members who might want to participate down the line, but kind of get the bulk of like X, Y, Z down and maybe you adjust it around the edges. But um, just for personal reasons, after I think September 1st, I would have a harder time putting time into the, putting the time necessary into the project, I think, to push it forward. So if, especially if other people would like to join the subcommittee, they're very much invited uh, to do so. And, and the, the September, I think it's the 10th meeting, um, we might put that on the agenda as well, uh, just to nominate additional or change the subcommittee to 
Um, there'll be new, a new member replacing member Holland. And then at the end of the year, everyone has to reapply uh, for their position as well. And some people may be uh, moving on. And so there might be some new committee members here in 2021 as well. So just something to keep in mind. I think Eva, is that a good segue to talk about? I, I don't have the agenda in front of me anymore and I, I can't manage too many screens, but next uh, agenda items for next meeting in September, is that where we are now? Sure, sounds good. I, I know everyone else might have suggestions. I don't wanna overwhelm us, but I do think if we can, we need to check in on Christian's existing mural project. Um, I don't have my notes in front of me, but we should have some type of update on where that stands, correct? The, I believe it was the diversity mural that's gonna go on San Pablo, the veterinary clinic, and we've been in back and forth discussions on the building was gonna be sold or not sold and what happened to it. And you know, I don't think we have resolution on that. I'd have to go back to the, meet, the minutes from I think February or January, but anyway, it would be good at least to put that back on our radar, I think. Um, for, for Christian and his wife's sake, if nothing else. So if we could find, put on the radar the sculpture loan program, because we still have these sculptures being, people would love to loan us, but we're just waiting on Public Works to put this, the pads down so we can install the sculptures. So Isabel, I don't know, I put all my hopes on you. <laughs> if we could find out from Public Works, if there's any chance that we could get those pads installed, we have the money, we are gonna pay for it. And Mark Hurley told me he was going to outsource it. So it's not like it's, but I know there's something going on. So I just wanna put that on the agenda and get back to it so that when I leave, I can tell those artists where we're at in that project. I'll check back with Mark on, on the status. Uh, obviously a lot of things have been pushed back due to uh, the pandemic. So I'll just see where um, the, 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 the pads are in the timeline. Thank you. Peter, you're on mute. My space bar doesn't work. Okay, uh, so the uh, Haiku project again. I... I'm not yeah. sure what's happening with the gallery and until the community center opens up, I'm in contact with the artists. So I could report back on that, but that would be about it until we get an okay in terms of the community center opening up. Okay. Anything else for the September agenda? And I, I want to clarify this meeting or this agenda item too is, is um, these are future agenda items that we, the committee suggests, and then it's up to the chair and, and vice chair to decide what's on the actual agenda. So Peter, I know you talked about the haiku being on there. Um, the idea was to really focus on the, um, on the Black Lives Matter uh, art piece. Um, but if you feel very strongly and have a lot or have something to discuss, please, by all means, email me or email the chair and say, I need this to be on the agenda and we'll make sure. But, so just wanted to clarify that. Anything else? So I think then we, uh, is there a motion to adjourn? Is that correct? I move to adjourn. Is there a second? Second. Second. Okay. <laughs> do we have to do a roll call for uh, all? <laughs> all no. Over? No. Okay. <laughs> Adjourned. You need your Thank gavel. You. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>